Welcome back. Hope you guys all had a great break and you know, uh, we're so glad you're joining us after the break. We, we had a great break. I had a large. What'd you do on I your had break? a large Sandy's. I think you have some glazed donut. Yeah, there's and some so, sugar donut on your sleeve so right watch there. Out. I think. It could be. I could be on a massive sugar high right now. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, okay. That, well, that'll hit during the middle of the segment. I guess we'll get started. <laughs> Recovery happens at home, in communities, and in the workplace. There are over 22 million people in the United States that have the disease of addiction. And nearly 70% of them are employed full or part-time. And we know from our own estimates here in North Dakota, and we know from across the country, the disease of addiction places a almost immeasurable cost on our economy, but it is, it's billions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars. The National Drug Institute uh, estimates that between the abuse of tobacco, alcohol, and illicit drugs in the US, it translates to $740 billion annually in costs related to crime, lost work productivity, and associated health care. And the CDC studies have shown that just the excessive drinking by itself cost the US almost $250 billion. So we can start supporting people's behavioral health in workplaces where people are working, the 70% that are struggling with addiction, they're in a workplace. If we can support them there as part of a full continuum of care, and that continuum of care includes prevention, early intervention, treatment, and recovery, if we can do that, we can lower costs and we can help people's lives. <clears throat> Last year, we started the conversations about building recovery-friendly workplaces and giving employers tools to make that happen. And as I mentioned before, uh, at the opening, as part of the introduction, the First Lady has been making great relationships at the federal level. And most recently, in the White House roundtable that she participated with, uh, with First Lady Melania, uh, Surgeon General Jerome Adams and Jim Carroll, uh, known as the drug czar, uh, also, Larry Kudlow, who's been in recovery for over 20 years, the director of the U.S. National Economic Council. Uh, all of these uh, were there. And who was sitting there with them? The First Lady of North Dakota. What was she talking about? <clears throat> she was not only courageously sharing her own story of recovery, but she was shining the spotlight on the transformative work of recovery-friendly workplaces. And she was highlighting a North Dakota company on a national scale. This year, we're thrilled to highlight a robust and effective recovery-friendly work workplace right here in our own backyard. And I was fortunate enough to share this incredible success story at this roundtable discussion in Washington. Solid Comfort has been a, a great company in Fargo, dates back, I know they've been around at least since the 1980s, but since 2013, this North Dakota-based manufacturer of hotel furniture, and they build these for leading brands like Hilton and Marriott, they've been at the forefront of offering more inclusive hiring practices as a way to fill open positions and to provide opportunities for job seekers, such as those with a criminal background who would have previously been overlooked. What started as a way to recruit employees in a tight labor market has evolved into a philosophy for hiring that provides training and support to help people thrive and grow in their career and community and help end the stigma of addiction. We know that pre-COVID, there was over 30,000 jobs available in the state of North Dakota. We know that post-COVID in 2021, that that's going to happen again where we're going to be uh, a state where we have lots and lots of jobs open and we're gonna have workforce shortages. Right now at 3.8% unemployment, North Dakota is the fourth lowest in the country in terms of unemployment today. So if you're an employer and you're listening, uh, you need to pay attention to this next segment. You need to learn from Solid Comfort because they're showing you an effective blueprint. About 75% of Solid Comfort's current great employees, uh, either they've got a history of struggling with addiction, mental health issues, or they've got criminal backgrounds. This past March, I had the opportunity to visit the Solid Comfort plant in Fargo, North Dakota, and learn about their Solid Start initiative, which is so much more than a employee orientation program. Um, I was so moved by the incredible stories of hope, recovery, and redemption that these individuals have gained through their support of Solid Comfort. So this is a first ever uh, in part of the Recovery Reinvented. We're having a lot of firsts today. Not only have a record audience, 
uh, over 2,500 people registered. We're doing our first live remote. And so we're here at the Livewire studio, but live uh, in their offices at Solid Comfort. Please welcome some of the team from Solid Comfort. We've got Heather, we've got John, we've got Molly. Uh, good morning, Solid Hi. Comfort team. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. We are so grateful to have you with us and uh, joining the Recovery Reinvented online audience this morning. And we'd love for you all to tell us a little bit more about Solid Comfort, the business, your story, and how your Solid Start philosophy came about. Take, Take it away. So Go for it. Um, very, very excited to be here. Um, thank you to the First Lady and the Governor. Um, I have, my name's Heather Shimke and I am the human resources manager here to my right. I have Molly Tice. She is a line coordinator and programmer. And to my left, I have Mr. John Tucker, who is our vice president of manufacturing operations. And we're just really excited to be here because we believe we have a fantastic story and we want to share it as our ultimate goal is to have all businesses participate in something similar. Um, as the First Lady said, we have, uh, it's called Solid Start. It's not a program, if you will, it's a philosophy. It's how we um, recruit and hire our candidates. Um, we look beyond their past, we look at where they're at today and where they can go. And we'd like to start our segment with a brief video. There are quite a few things that make Solid Comfort unique. Um, one of them is what we have when it comes to our hiring philosophy, which is Solid Start. So within Solid Start, we have our philosophy and our culture of, if you have the drive and you have the desire, we do have an opportunity. And that's what we want to give everybody. So before I came to Solid Comfort, um, I spent a little time in jail. Um, I was in prison for about four years. Child Protective Services stepped in um, because of my drug use. Um, that was my lowest point um, when my children were taken away from my custody. I went from renting an apartment. Actually, I wasn't even renting an apartment. Uh, I was uh, living with my girlfriend at the time. Then I was my wife. Um, I have, you know, three kids with her. One of the requirements to owning your own house is having a job for two years. I wasn't able to do that before at all because nobody would give me the chance to even work past 90 days. I'm the perfect example of addiction can happen to anybody. I was a wife, a mother. I had a great career working at a hospital and somebody introduced me to meth and within a year I had lost everything. Um, my home, my job, my kids, and I was living on the streets. When I came here, I was desperate and I said to them in the interview, I said, you know what, I've never done manufacturing, but I'm a hard worker I promise you I'll try my best. I learn fast, and if you just give me a chance, I'll prove to be a loyal employee. And they did give me that chance. They assisted me with helping me get a place to live, um, a furniture for my place. Um, they also helped me um, when I was fighting for custody for my kids, they helped me very, very much. I get my children every other weekend, holidays, um, in the summertime. Um, I'm going to get emotional, sorry. Um. 
But I've struggled with addiction for over 25 years. Coming out of prison, I was determined, and I knew that I could work hard. It's so wonderful to be surrounded by people that get it, that understand. You don't feel out of place. You're in your comfort zone. You know, anybody coming from prison to start a job, it'd been over almost 15 years since I had a job. And just to walk into the open arms and the welcoming and not to be ashamed. So five years ago, I was, uh, I was probably in jail and still involved in my active addiction at the time. Um, it wasn't until about four to four and a half years ago where I was released and I really started working the recovery path. It's been a great journey here, great, and it's gonna be even better. I mean, this has been the best three and a half years of my life ever. With the peer support um, mindset, you know, everybody looks out for each other. And when somebody's having a bad day, you stop and you talk. Hey, how are you doing? You know, because the biggest thing with recovery is staying in recovery. And Solid Start and Solid Comfort has is, is got that nailed down firm. My why um, of being here is seeing people flourish who've had barriers before and never any opportunities to do well. Once you are accepted as, as part of Solid Comfort, it's welcome to the family. And so I guess it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Hi, once again, my name is John Tucker. I'm the Vice President of Manufacturing Operations here. Um, one of the things that uh, we started off with was the why. Why would we do something like this? Well, back when we took a look at this, um, we did. We were in a tight labor market. And so as we looked at it, we wanted to think outside the box and say, what options do we have out there when it comes to our value proposition um, to employees? Um, and one of the things is, is, is this market of those that have been incarcerated, those with addictions. Um, how did we start that? Because actually we started from scratch. Um, I can tell you on a business sense that um, there are ups and downs and there are some difficulties of going through this. Um, on a business side of things, we got a hold of those that were involved with this organizations. We had an open house and we started very, very slowly, very incrementally. We didn't take a, a large bite of this. We took it one bit at a time. Uh, I can tell you that from that point on till now, um, we've, we've pretty much established ourselves on how we do what we do. Uh, we're continuously learning though. And that's something that everyone needs to be open to as a business is once you got it, it doesn't mean you got it forever. You got it right then and there. There's always something changing. On the second hand of our, this is a personal point of view and you get to know everybody. And when I say once you're part of the family, you are, you're part of the family. Um, we take interest in what your interests are or what's going on in your life. Um, we celebrate your milestones. Uh, we've got a lot of things that happen here and we, we take those interests uh, pretty seriously. Um, something that we had to go through here at the company is when we decided to really take this and take it into an official stance um, was the unconscious bias and the stigma that was there. And how do we change the minds of those that work here that this is a good thing that we do? Um, I believe if you wanted yeah. to add to that, you, you, you know a lot about the unconscious we, bias portion. Yes, we have many um, employers. We were even contacted um, by organizations on the East Coast and people really want to do this. They want to, they see the value and they don't know where to start. And my first tip to all organizations is you have to address your conscious and unconscious bias about the words addiction, mental health, uh, felon, because 
if you can't resolve those words, there's always going to be that block. And then the individuals with those backgrounds, they have to carry the shame and they have to carry all the negativity. And then while the employers are having the judgment. So those things have to go away for us to all ultimately um, move forward. And um, it's really the shame that holds people back or their, their, their biases. And so the number one thing you really have to do is really hold the mirror up, look at ourselves and say, what, is, what does this actually mean? And I know Molly had her struggles with biases as well. Yeah. Um, when I left this community, I left in handcuffs and shackles. I was called an addict, a junkie, a criminal, and a danger to the community. When I came back to this community after treatment and, and time and all that, I went, the first thing I had to do was get a good job because I had to take care of myself. There was nothing to me more important than getting my family back. But before I could do that, I had to be able to take care of myself. So I needed a good job. And when I went out looking for a job, those words traveled with me. You know, I didn't go into an interview saying, oh, I'm a drug addict, but I've been in recovery for four years. But I had to explain the four years lapse in my job history. I had to explain that my supervising agent was going to call to verify my employment. But when I did that, dozens and dozens of companies from restaurants to gas stations to um, com other businesses, um, you know, they weren't willing to take a chance on me and, and Solid Comfort was. And I'm so grateful to John and to Jason and the leadership here. They gave me a chance, but that was only the first step. When I started working here, I started working on the production floor. So I got an entry level position. I was scared to tell people my name because I didn't want them to look at me up and I didn't want them to think I was a drug addict, even though I was in recovery. Um, that started changing once John and I and a couple others started working on the, what we called at that time a second chance program. Um, people started working here that knew my past and they were talking openly about it. So I kind of grew more comfortable because as an addict, you get stronger every time you share your testimony. You get stronger every time you share your story. I was going into the jails and um, AA meetings and the churches, the rehab halfway houses, and people um, were comfortable. I was getting more comfortable with it. And then there was a stigma that I didn't want to tell some people about it. And it took a long time. It really took a long time in order for me to be comfortable about it and share my story. And we're so happy she did. Um, I, I think something else to um, point out is that we also um, don't just hire anyone. Um, we have had to, from a business perspective, create um, boundaries, accountabilities. And what we did is we created what we call a risk rubric. It's an Excel yeah. spreadsheet, but it took away the subjectivity and it also let us how we defined risk we, um, yes, we created this simple tool and we, um, it's based upon the type of crime you've had, how long ago it was, how many of them there are. And we, the, the group that we really focus on are, are folks who um, their charges, their felony charges are surrounded around um, substance abuse. And so th those are the focus, um, you know, any type of violent crimes, we would hire them after some time has passed. But we, um, so the notion that um, you can come in here and you know maybe use or we'll hire anyone, that is false because it's yeah. not just about mm -hmm. each employee, it's about us as an organization, mm -hmm. so. And as an organization, this is, I wanna, wanna also say, this is not a charity. Every person that's hired here um, with with some kind of background or anything like that, they've got to work. And we are firm and fair with what we do. And we have made ourselves accountable to ourselves so that we do take the subjectivity out of certain things. There, there are times when, unfortunately, we do have to release people saying, solid comfort is not right for you. You are not right for solid comfort. Um, but it doesn't mean they're not right for another company. And that's something we'd like to extend to is we're proof that this works. 
And I would challenge other businesses to really take a hard look at this. Um, if you positively affect the individual, that person can positively affect other individuals around them and their family, which can positively affect the community. And that's what it's all about. Besides the business point, our margins and things like that, they're positive. But when it comes to the humanity of every, everything and how we help each other, that's what's really it's all about. And solid comfort gives the opportunity, as John said, but you have to earn it and you have to work for it. I started in true level and that was seven and a half years ago. And I've been promoted several times. I now work in the office. I'm part of John's leadership team. But the really cool thing is my story isn't unique. We have dozens of oh. people that work here that have the same, same story. The leadership here trusts you. You prove yourself. You have that drive, desire, motivation, and you can go far. Um, there are people that have worked here that not only you know, advanced here, but some have moved on to excellent careers in their, in their field of choice. Correct. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add? <laughs> um, I, going back to the why, why other organizations, um, in my opinion, need to do this. Part of it is, and Dr. Drew mentioned this, which by the way, thank you for not having us directly after <laughs> Dr. Drew, that would be hard. But um, so many people are affected by it. And how long do people have to wear a label? Mm -hmm. It follows them forever. And when we employ people, we help uh, relieve pressure off of a system that they might be reliant on. When they work for us, now you have health insurance. Um, one of my new favorite wins is we have an updated 401k plan and we have women who were maybe in prison and, and men uh, a few years ago and today they're contrib um, contributing to a 401k plan. So mm -hmm. when we help them, we're helping the community. So now you have someone who doesn't need all the, um, you know, the reliance on the system because now they have a job, they have a place to live, they have their own health insurance. So they can also um, participate with all of us. And I think mm -hmm. instead of complaining about groups of people not doing enough, maybe it's time to look at ourselves as businesses and um, learn what's our responsibility. Um, you know, something else that we do that was part of making the rubric was you have to understand your state, what some of these charges mean. Um, there might be some felonies that might sound worse than they really are. So when you get to know them, um, it's, you, uh, can, you start looking at them differently. And a lot of these individuals, it, it goes back to they have addictions, probably because they have mental health issues and probably because they struggled with something maybe in their upbringing, possibly trauma. So it all makes sense. So when you peel all that back, you just, you have the people. And I think um, with that mindset, you can do it. Um, yeah. Really and anything. People in, and people in recovery are so grateful and blessed and so motivated. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. And I, talking about it, normalizing it. I have someone who recently said, I've never been able to talk about my mental illness openly. Mm -hmm. You know, you see somebody, hey, have you started those new meds? How's it going? Because we talk about things. It's not, um, there's not that stigma. So, sorry, John. It's all right. Thank you, nice. solid comfort, John and Molly and Heather. Uh, so inspirational to hear uh, the personal stories of your team members. Can you hear us okay? Yes. All right, awesome. Go ahead. Yep. Can you hear me? I don't know. Can, can I, you hear me okay? I can hear you, yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to say, again, thank you, uh, Solid Comfort, to your team, uh, and uh, Molly and Heather and John, and for, your, for leadership and to all your team members 
for sharing their story. We want to give a shout out to Allie and Anna. Those are the two NDSU students uh, who put together the video on solid comfort to open up this segment. Uh, they're part of the Bison Information Network. Uh, they filmed the interviews, edited, edited it, put all the music to it. We're grateful for their time and talent to help share the story. And since we're talking about NDSU, I love that behind Molly, I think that's a picture of the Frisco <laughs> National Championship yeah. game. So, uh, <laughs> so go Bison, way to go, the Bison Information Network. Uh, but I wanted to again say uh, to, to all of you and, and, and Heather, some of the words that you said at the beginning about, about mental health, addiction, and felon. Having a discussion about those words and as advice to any other business that's thinking about taking on uh, this kind of approach uh, is really about what Recovery Reinvented has been about. It's about how do we get rid of the shame and the stigma of things that can get us to normalize the conversation. And so you guys are such role models for that. It's fantastic and a real inspiration. And thanks for, thanks for, for sharing that with us today. Well, and you know, I just have to say, um, a few things. So one is, um, hey, businesses out there, uh, there's a pipeline of uh, people ready to go to work. Just make those, create those relationships with judges and parole officers, right? Because uh, there are people, you know, that you can find through that pipeline, untapped pipeline, right? But right. And then, anyway. And like, and like Molly said, they are people that that work hard, they have the skills, yes. they're ready to go, they're motivated, they just need someone to give them a chance. And I mean, it's, uh, it, it can't help but get emotional watching the video and, and, and hearing people say, these are the best years of my life, uh, that, or that this is, they gave me that chance. I mean, this is what we can do for each other as a state and as a community. And the thing is, what John was saying, Solid Comfort is not a nonprofit. Solid Comfort is a for-profit business and they're doing this because it's good for their team members and what's good for their team members is good for their bottom line. And that's again the message to all the businesses. Recovery, recovery friendly yes. workplaces are uh, yeah. good for business. And good for our community. Like I know you guys talk a lot about that, that this is, you know, this is really about community and, and, and making more opportunities available. I have to say, I met Zach who was on the video early, early in his recovery. Um, and, you know, connected him with a couple of people. And then, I don't know, maybe like six or eight months later, maybe a year later, I can't remember, this guy comes up to me at the airport in Fargo and he's like, hey, do you remember me? And I was like, man, I, hmm. And he had changed <laughs> so much, you know, like he was so happy and healthy. And he was like, hey, I'm a felon and I get to fly around and I've got this great job and a great company. So, <laughs> you know, anyway, but I, so that's just a really an, an incredible story. And, and thanks for, you know, all the people that you give a chance to. But then one other thing I wanted to ask you about is a couple of years ago, we did a, um, we, we had a panel discussion and we wanted to feature companies that had, you know, that were hiring people that were coming out of the criminal justice system. We want to learn more about what companies are doing to build recovery friendly workplaces. And we reached out to Solid Comfort. And you guys were like, no, we don't, we don't want to do that because we're worried that, you know, our customers will hold it against us if they know that you know, we are hiring people out of the criminal justice system. And I'm so happy that you aren't there anymore and you're sort of telling the world about this, but what changed for you guys? <laughs> Tell us what changed. How, how did you get to be where you are now? Well, I think on, on, I'll, I'll give my point of view on what we did as a business is when we started looking at this, we did. We were concerned with how does this look? And that has to do with the stigma, has to do with that unconscious bias. What do people think about us? And how do we represent ourselves? Um, I just want to say every year, uh, every day, every week, every month, every year, we evolve. Mm -hmm. We learn more and more. And we got to a point where we says, you know what? This is not something to be ashamed of. This is something that we should be a pr proud of, that we have a staff of people that are doing well. Um, we do lose some, but at the same time, um, that are doing well and are excelling. And we should be proud that we are part of a community that we're trying to help. Um, once again, on the business side, um, yeah, the, the, we are a profitable company. And on the other side, when it comes to the humanitarian uh, part of it, uh, we give back to the community. 
And so that was something that we did, finally decided, said, yes, we are now gonna say, this is officially what we do, this is who we are, and we're not ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so great. <laughs> right, and that's what, what, why it's also not a program. You know, it's not yeah. a program, yeah. it's a philosophy, so. Yeah. And it's embraced by everybody working here. It's embraced by the leadership. And to thank for all this, we have our president and CEO, Jason Larkin, who without, the, without him, none of this would have been possible. Yes. On, on, uh, we know that a solid comfort uh, has Narcan on site, the opioid overdose reversing antidote. Uh, we, we also know as a nation, uh, in the early 1990s, that uh, people weren't aware of how highly addictive and how a person's brain can change after even seven days of these highly addictive uh, narcotic and initially prescription, often prescription pain meds. Uh, and then we saw what happened other states uh, that were just devastated by the uh, over, overuse of this. Uh, but tell us a little bit about that. We, at Part of Recovery, we invented each of the years and this afternoon, uh, we'll, we offer Narcan, we'll be doing it this year virtually to families and family members. We'll have training on how to use it. But you've also been a leader at Solid Comfort in having it on site, uh, training your team on how to use it. But maybe talk a little bit about uh, why it's important for any business to keep Narcan on hand, how to use it, and if, and if you've ever uh, had any opportunity to, to save a life at Solid Comfort. Who wants it, me, you, you guys? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, well, yeah, okay, um, Narcan. I think wh whether, regardless of where you're at when it comes to a business, I think Narcan's important to have on site. Um, some time ago, yeah, we, we got to a point where we supplied Narcan here. We were supplied with it, and we've got training um, on the nasal spray and, and how that works. And we did have an incident here that occurred and we had a person that unfortunately um, um, fell off the wagon, so to speak, and um, relapsed. basically relapsed and relapsed on the production floor. And so I was second on, on line on this one. Uh, Roberto Lopez, our, one of our managers in assembly, uh, was first on contact and was getting all, what was happening uh, to this individual who was on the floor. I was second there, so I was, I was back, backing him up. And essentially, the information we got real quickly was that he was overdosing right then and there. Um, we administered Narcan and um, basically um, saved his life according to the doctors and to the medics uh, that, that showed up. Um, it was a very fortunate thing that we had that or else we would have had a fatality. And um, I can tell you this person right now, um, doesn't work here anymore due to, due to our requirements on how you work here, but that person is doing well and is healthy right now. I still keep in contact with him. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's, he's um, evolving into uh, the, the great young man that he is. So. He also shared um, with us after the incident that if he would have been at home doing it, he probably would have died yeah. because no one would have been there and the Narcan, yeah. so, um, yeah. That's, that's incredible. I mean, oh my gosh, I'm so, uh, you know, it's such an inspiring story, and an inspiring story for other businesses to make sure you have Narcan on site because you don't always know who those people are that could overdose someday um, at, at the workplace. And, and again, I, I think we went through something about 15, 20 years ago where every business got a uh, AED, because we said, hey, we've got a device that can help revive people if you have a heart attack. That was very normalized. There was no stigma around that. Uh, and the same thing with Narcan. If you've got it, if you've got it on your workplace, it, speaking to all employers, follow Solid Comfort's lead here. You know, have an AED, have Narcan, train your staff, normalize it, uh, save a life. And so again, uh, thank you, Solid Comfort, for being a leader. And thanks for sharing your insight. Uh, about one how, more about question. how you're transforming lives, but we right. got, we have one more thing. Just one more question, actually, real quick. Question or is it well, it's kind of a, just a very. We only have a little time for this but for response, but you guys have a peer support specialist on your um, staff, and yes. and help us understand why you do that, why you have someone who's um, a peer support specialist working in your company, and why it might be important for other businesses to consider having peer support specialists 
in the company or access, providing access to employees to peer support specialists? Yes. So uh, peer support specialist, we, uh, Johnny, he was on the video. Um, it's only been a, a couple months that he's been in the role, but he previously went through the training. And we, for us, um, a lot of the employees will come and talk to us, but it's nice to have somebody who's also experienced it, who's on the floor, someone they trust. And um, he does a, a fantastic job. And just to be able, it as a human resources manager, it makes me feel better because it is an extension of our employee assistance program to say, yeah. this person has resources for us. So um, all businesses should have one because you'd be prob you probably wouldn't be surprised how many individuals do struggle with the addiction and yeah. the mental health portion. So, um, yeah, we'd like to have more. We're starting with one. Well, fantastic. that's fantastic. fantastic. As, as the First Lady shared at the beginning, 22 million people in America struggle with a disease of addiction. 70% of those are employed. Employers, you probably don't know who they are because they're probably hiding it. Uh, but uh, follow Heather's direction. Uh, get a peer support specialist on your staff. Use them as part of your extension of what you're doing. It's a great, another great best practice. So thank you. for uh, Thank you, Solid Comfort, and congrats on your solid start culture and philosophy. I think of it as... Uh, how wonderful it must be for someone to come to work and be in literally a judge-free zone, a, a zone of support. Uh, that's got to be transformational in itself. So uh, thank you for helping normalize the conversation for so many people. But before we go, uh, we have a little surprise for you, so don't hang up yet. <clears throat> In recognition for establishing company-wide recovery-friendly policies that provide second chance opportunities for people coming out of the criminal justice system who are, or who are on the path to recovery through the Solid Start initiative, we are thrilled and so excited to share that Solid Comfort is the Recovery Reinvented 2020 Phoenix Award winner. Yay! Woohoo! Oh, get ready. Get ready. Whoa! Yeah! Woohoo! Betty Cannon. Uh, <clears throat> Yay! Famous, famous for rising from the ashes. Uh, famous. Oh, thank, you. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, it, we're so. Thank you. So well deserved, and I'm glad to see there was. I think I saw a little confetti cannon on your end from yeah. the crew yeah. there. There it is. So way yeah. to go. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but of course, the, this award, uh, named after the Phoenix, not after the city, uh, but after the, uh, uh, the, the famous uh, bird from, uh, right. from culture and history uh, that rises from the ashes to be born again. It's a testament to second chance opportunities and renewal. And the Recovery Reinvented Phoenix Award recognizes a leader or organization that demonstrates the spirit of a phoenix in providing opportunity where one is not readily found. So... Can't imagine anybody more deserving than this. Uh, the award will be on the way to you. Uh, but again, congratulations to everybody at Solid Comfort. A true, true example of how businesses can support recovery in the workplace and empower people through giving them an opportunity. And Solid Comfort is a true treasure. And we're so lucky and grateful to have you in North Dakota. Thank you so much. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Yay! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Congrats again to Solid Comfort. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so great to have them here. What? How fun to have that live have that live feed. Thank Molly, you. John, yep. Heather, Take care. You. Tell your whole team. Congrats. Yes. Absolutely. Yay! Thank you. Thank you.